Hey, what's up everybody? So today, well, let's wait for a few people to pop on and let me know how your day is going. Um, today we're going to be talking about how to increase your prices. Um, if you're charging under 2k, then this, uh, this live will definitely be valuable for you. If you're charging two to three, maybe 4k, then this live will still be valuable for you. Um, shedding some light on areas you might not have considered before. So with that, let's go ahead and pop into the subject for today, which is how do you increase your prices? So if you're charging under $2,000, there are a couple of things you're probably doing wrong. And we will be getting into those on this live as well. But I want to really start out with what is, how do you do it? How do you actually increase your prices? So here are the top three mistakes I see. Those that are blowing a lot of sales calls, you're getting a lot of price objections, and you're not closing sales. This is why you're most likely not landing those sales. And sorry if I'm blue today, um, I'm feeling kind of, no. I don't know why my camera or my whatever is blue, but today I'm like a smurf. So uh, let's just go with that and use a blueberry theme. Anyways, number one thing, asking more questions and creating fewer statements. If you're charging under 2K and you're not making enough money to sustain yourself, if you're blowing a lot of sales calls, if you're not getting enough clients in your pipeline, this is probably one of the biggest mistakes you're making. Not asking enough questions, making too many statements. So what's the remedy? What's the solution for this? You want to ask more leading questions, right? What is a leading question? Um, here's an example. Would charging 3K and up help you live a more fulfilled, satisfying life? That's a leading question. And what it's, you know, why do we ask a leading question? Well, we ask a leading question because we want to reframe our prospect's identity, right? And this is getting into the second step of whatever this is, this process. If our prospect doesn't even understand what we sell and why it's worth $3,000, 4000 $5,000, there is why would they buy right why would why would you buy something if you didn't even know all of its features right you know i'm a photographer as well i don't know if you guys know that but i love i love photography i love videos i love cameras and for the longest time i thought there's a brand called leica right it's a very premium brand their cameras are easily double the price of all the other competitors and I could never understand why. Why would I pay $6,000 for a Leica camera when I can spend $3,000 on a Sony, right? In my mind, I had not built the value. In my mind, I had not fully understood what is the benefit to me as a consumer of buying this $6,000 camera. So I had not asked myself these questions and neither had the manufacturer asked me these questions. So by asking leading questions such as, you know, what would it do for you if you had a camera that could withstand a thunderstorm and you could keep shooting? What would it do for you if you had a, um, let's say a bicycle that let you um, regenerate your energy on an uphill kind of hill climb? What would it do for you if your shoes were 30% lighter and allowed you to um, reduce knee fatigue, right? These are leading questions. And what they do is they build value in your prospect size without leading questions, right? Without these asking more of these leading questions, you're going to have a really tough time selling anything probably 
even above 400 bucks. The higher your price goes, the more information and the more certainty your prospect needs, right? That's a statement. We want to make few of those. We want to make lots of these. So let me ask you guys, drop it in the comments. What are you guys charging for your coaching, your creative service? And what's the biggest issue you're having, right? What is the biggest issue you're having? Drop it in the comments. I can see all the comments and we can do a Q&A if you guys have questions. So go ahead and pop it in the comments. So what does, you know, this lead into? Why do we ask leading questions? Excuse me. And if you just joined in, I am blue today for some reason. My camera connection seems to be wanting to make me blue. So that's why I'm blue. There's no real good explanation. Let me know if you guys like this blue look. I'm just kind of curious if it's cool, if it's distracting. Um, does it make the blue red? I don't know. So what does this lead into? Developing a process that shifts the client identity around, you know, around your product and that's the sales process that's when you go on a sales call and why do you need to start shifting the client's identity why is this important can anybody answer this why is it important to shift your client's identity write it in the comments if you know if you don't know well we just discussed it earlier Let's say I'm a professional photographer and I shoot weddings, right? And let's say um, there is a couple that wants to do an engagement shoot um, on a waterfall, right? If I'm a photographer and I'm about to go shoot this engagement shoot on a waterfall, like under the waterfall, I want a camera that is kind of waterproof. So if I am a photographer that's looking for a waterproof camera, what's the most important feature to me? What do you guys think? What's the most important feature to me? It's going to be some camera that can at least go with, you know, water splashing all over it for at least 30, 40 minutes, right? So if a camera manufacturer asks me, hey, what would it be worth to you if you could shoot uninterrupted um, in a full downpour without um, any limitations with, you know, um, like this fully waterproof camera. That's going to immediately zone my attention in that direction. Whatever everybody else is saying, all the other camera manufacturers, whatever they're saying, I'm going to be just solely focused, right? So for you guys, you guys are coaches, creators, consultants, selling a premium product or you want to sell a premium product, right? What's the first thing that distinguishes you from the rest of the crowd? What is that kind of USP? What's that unique selling feature? And instead of, you know, making a statement about it, you want to start shifting into asking more questions around what is it that makes you unique? So I was just talking to a dating coach earlier today, and I think you're on the call, actually. Um, so he was telling me that he was a nomad, right? He was a nomad, and he overcame this, like, really terrible, like, shy complex to date these incredible kind of out-of-your-league women. So what is unique about that? Um, first thing that stands out to me is, like, if you're a nomad, you don't really have a stable group of friends. You don't really have um, kind of a circle. You have to be really good at creating connections on the fly, nomadically. So a leading question for him might be, how valuable would it be for your dating life if you could um, pick up a phone number in 15 minutes from hello, for example, right? And this is who is this going to be valuable to it's going to be valuable to somebody that doesn't have maybe a lot of time maybe for somebody that's a digital nomad maybe it's somebody that just doesn't like the long drawn out process of dating and they find that quick connection really valuable so using these leading questions instead <clears throat> excuse me oh that was weird 
So, okay, using the leading questions versus making fewer statements to create a process that shifts the client identity, aka the sales process, what will that do? That will finally help you get into creating an irresistible offer. Once you have asked enough of these leading questions, you'll have a really clear understanding of who is your ideal client, who is not your ideal client, what attracts them to your offer, what does not attract them. Hey, Andy, loving how quickly you implement our conversation. Yeah, man, got to think quick. So, creating an irresistible offer. When we have this ammo, right, we've created a lot of leading questions, we've got feedback from our market, we really understand what are the key drivers to a sale. Then we can start crafting an irresistible offer. And I'm not going to go into this part today because it requires some one-on-one -on -one and it requires some kind of like in-depth work to your unique situation. But always feel free to PM me or write in the comments if you have a specific question on your offer. So I'd like to wrap up today, right, by reviewing what is it that drives your prices up, up, up. Number one, asking more leading questions. Got to get good at this, guys. Got to get good at asking leading questions. Making fewer statements. You know, if somebody asks you, what do you do? Don't go and blurt out a paragraph of what you do. Work on, work on this. Then take that and develop a process that shifts the client's identity in your sales process. And I, I'm happy to help anybody that needs work on their sales process. So if you need help with your sales process, write in the comments shoot me a DM and I'll be happy to work on that with you. Then finally, once you have these two kind of in place, this sets you up for an irresistible offer. You will know the three, four, five key unique selling points of your coaching, your consulting, your creative field. And you can really then craft a message that will blow these socks off of who your ideal client is and also for this, if you have questions, comments, put them in the comments, shoot me a DM and I'd be happy to look over that for you. Other than that, guys, have a great week. I hope you enjoy this process because it's really actually a lot of fun. It's really fun to get to know people, ask questions and, you know, start getting two, three, four, five, six grand for your coaching, your creative work. It's actually a lot of fun. So with that, have a great week. I will see you all very soon. Take